welcome back to the biggest agricultural platform in Namibia known as Nduna Wengombe, which means Headman of Carol in English. My name, of course, is Mitchell Mutumba Simata, a.k.a. The Headman of Carol. Today, on the 21st of October, 2021, I'd love to speak about another uh, cattle breed, but another Italian cattle breed, the close cousin to the Shianina we spoke last time about. We're going to speak about the Roma Ngola cattle breed, which is another Italian cattle breed. So as you guys know, I'm never writing solo. I got my trusted notebook here with my not so flattering handwriting as my friends would always tell me so without wasting time let's get into the information of the ramangola breed of cattle so the first ramangolas were imported into south africa in 1995 by italian uh, businessman armando paloco who established a stud on the farm rosa garden near hackport in northwest Baloko originally imported a bull, a cow with calf at foot, and two heifers. He added he added the ones that he bought with uh, with more with more with six more heifers. The flooding Rosen Rosen Garten stud was established was then as, was then developed into a virtual into was then developed in a virtual red water, hot water, and gall sickness felt via artificial insemination and, and embryo and embryo trans, uh, transfer programs. Neville Bradfield, Neville Bradfield managed this, uh, managed this pioneering the, Ramang the Ramangolas stud from 2003 to 2009. It became the source from which other, other South African breeders, including uh, Brad Bradfield himself, procured the, founda founding, uh, the foundation genetics. Bradfield registered, the two, registered his two cows Aigiro, Aigiro Rama, Ramangolo stud on Rosengarten in 2006. Three years later, he took, he took his animals to his family farm in the Eastern Cape. From Italy to Africa, the breed can be traced back to the 4th century AD when the Goths, when the Goths, when the Goths introduced, introduced, it, introduced its predecessor into Italy. This cattle became synonymous these animals became synonymous with the Romania region in northeast Italy, and by the 20th century were divided into three subgroups that were sought after as draft animals, which meant working cattle, probably doing plowing, cart pulling, and so many other works. This changed in the second half of the 20th century as an increase, as an, as an increase of machinery started coming in, which ended up which ended up shifting, almost similar to the Shianini, they ended up shifting now the mindset from breeding them to be able to work, but bred them now for meat, for meat uh, potential. Carcass potential is what they looked at. Performance testing that measured growth, muscle development, and carcass yield. Females were selected predominantly for reproductive efficiency and maternal capacity. Today, the, Ramang, the Ramangolas, Ramangola, the Ramangola value is value in crossbreeding programs has taken them across the world. Ramangola genetics have also made their way to Namibia, Namibia, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Uganda, those four countries and I believe. But let's speak, let's speak a bit about the breed characteristics of the Ramangola cattle breed. The Ramangola is a robust animal showing, mar showing, marketed, showing marked evidence of thickness and muscle and masculinity throughout. The top line and hind quarters, top line which is the back hind quarters, which is the back legs, are the area where the beef, where the beef producing ability of the breed is more obvious. The breed shows good length with a round, well sprung rib cage and trim underline. The ivory color coat has black skin underneath. So just like the Shianina, underneath the, the, the white fur, the animals are black skinned. Black skin underneath, uh, and all extremities are black pigment. The coloration is a, is a survival factor in hot climate, as in as the ability to grow a dense winter coat. So just almost similar to most European breeds, they have a smooth coat, the Simmental, for example. They have a smooth coat in summer, a thick winter coat for cold areas. So if you're farming it in a hot country, the animals will be smoother. If you're farming them in an area, in a place where you have seasonal changes between summer and winter, the animals will have to, will have to develop a very thick coat to protect them from the cold. The, the, that continue going, the animal's maturity 
is a characteristic of the breed. This, this is important both for early, for early market requirements at an early age. Another fundamental characteristic of the breed is its, easy, its ease of calving. Because calves are born with a small head and long body. The calves are born with a, with a, a white, a wheaten, a wheaten skin coat, which is almost lightish, almost your very light brown, almost goldish color coat, which, la which, later, which later changes to white. They are vigorous and up and nursing quickly, quickly after birth. Cows have a strong maternal instinct and have a lot of milk, a lot of milking, have a very good milking ability. The Ramangola temperament is docile but alert, making it an easy, making it an, an easy breed to handle. From its past history as a draft animal, as a draft animal, the Ramangola has developed the ability to move well on strong legs with flexible joints and, and very strong feet. Its hardiness and ability to forage and thrive on poor pastures has proven to be a viable trait for the breed in the widely in, in widely different type of different type of grazing areas, different type of pastures and different type of grazing areas. So this could be the animal that you could run on just grass, 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 or run it probably in bushveld, which means it's a mixture of grass and, and, and thorn bushes. It would do quite well which is uh, widely available in South Africa because it is bred in South Africa. And I read also here, the Namibian farmers that have uh, Rama, Ramangola, Ramangola cattle run them in an area, are farming them here in the Comas High Field, that side of New Dam, which is a mixture of gray, grass and acacia thorn bush and hills. So they're performing quite well there. They're not really uh, showing any struggling there. So they're doing quite well. So this is available to this, this is the type of conditions they run them in South Africa. And also similar, we run the same conditions here in Namibia, depending if you're farming in the Comas Highland, which is more hilly, stony, thorn bushes, sparse grazing, very fine grass, it, it performs quite well. South African breeders, South African breeders will verify the ability of the Ramangola to survive under difficult grazing conditions without reducing the ability to grow and raise calves. So they are the animals, they perform well in these conditions. Cross-breeding of the Ramangola cattle. In many commercial beef production operations worldwide, cross-breeding plays a major role. In Australia, the Amer Australia and the Americans, the Ramangola seers are being used increasingly in cross-breeding systems to improve the quality and the quantity of beef production. The productive benefits of hybrid vigor in terminal crosses cost the cattleman nothing and can benefit him considerably. So they're another animal that is sought after in crossbreeding. I did read somewhere that they do actually crossbreed them with Nguni cows and they actually do quite well. Not heifers, but cows, mature cows, not heifers. Um, the Rama Gola crossbreed are known to grow fast and efficient. They can be fed to, they can be fed on a wide range, I mean, sorry, they can be paired to a wide range of terminal weights, making them highly profitable in feedlot environments. They, cons they consistently produce the type of carcass modern day cattlemen prefer, a 60% to 65% dressing percentage and tender lean fine grain beef. That's 62% to 65%, I said 60%, but it's 62%, 65% is fat covering. So, the modern day meat eater prefers a steak that doesn't have too much fat. You know, if it's too much fat, it's a big no-no. Medical conditions, high blood pressure, heart conditions, and so forth. This is why we prefer lean beef. The Ramangolas cross, cross extremely well with all breeds of cattle. When crossing with an English breed, the offspring will gain an improved conformation and feed conversion, approximately 22 to 45 k kilograms weight gain at seven months from the Ramangol side, the Ramangola side. A Ramangola crossed with a cemental will downsize the frame of the offspring and give them the ability to finish off at 13 to 14 months of age. So 
that's how they go about or the cemental because most people cemental is a big breed of cattle so most of the time would think you're going to develop a monster but it actually helps it downsize it but gives it a very good finish of 13 to 14 months rama rama angus rama angus which is the ramangola x angus gained popularity all over the world for its superior finishing off and meat quality the carcass of the ramangola cattle breed explained one of the Romangola's breed's asset is the exceptional nutritional and visual quality of its beef and quantity of the Romangola beef is universally recognized. The meat has a superior taste with a light rosy red, light rosy red, fine texture and exceptional marbling. The low cholesterol levels have been confirmed scientifically since 1982. In Italy, the quality of the Ramangola's meat has been guaranteed by a consortium of breeders and butchers. Because of the early maturing of the breed, an animal at the age of 20 to 22 months has an exceptional high life weight, close to that of the mature of mature animals. This provides the ability to finish out any age, any age. Any age of, of, of any age of the Ramaniol winners. So that give more money in your pocket for those who are in winner production. Rapid growth rates combined with addressing percentage of about 62 to 64 provides the ideal carcass for tender lean meat that today's consumer de demands. As I said, nowadays medical conditions, high blood pressure, heart rate, heart problems because of eating too much uh, cholesterol. So you need to monitor the cholesterol and they say the Ramangola's beef is lean. The Ramangola offers, muscle, offers, offers good muscle, muscling, muscling throughout the, through genetic and not through the use of hormones, not through, not through the use of growth hormones. So when you're using a Ramangola bull, your calves will be well muscled and you would not need to give them growth hormones for them to develop the good muscle. This is, this is passed through the genetics. So, like most European breeds, the Shianeni, the, Ramang, the Ramangola, the Ramangola, the Belgian Blue. Belgian Blue is a double muscling animal. These animals are very muscular and also the Simmental, very well muscled animals. They're known for good muscle. This saves the farmer input costs and allows him or her to produce high quality, tender and tasty beef. So that is the Ramangola, the Italian white cattle breed. Similar to the Shianina, but I think they differ. I've seen the Ramangola tends to be uh, white and sometimes there's a black neck and some black rings around the, the ears. The Shianina, the pictures that I got to see about them, they also get the black neck around the neck. I mean, also get the black at the neck and shoulder, but they're a bit more white in color and I think they differ in size. The Ramangola bull could weigh about 1,000, 1,600. Um, or 1,000 can weigh about the heavier. This is weight that they got in South Africa, where one farmer crossbreed. Crossbreeding, as I mentioned, one farmer in South Africa ended up using a Ramangola bull on Nguni cow. So his Ramangola bull weighed, weighed about 1,000, 1,060 kilograms, and he put it on Nguni cow that's about 350. And they were able to give birth to a very beautiful calf. So it's a heavy breed of cattle. Some some sources say this animal can go, what a bull can go, can weigh 1,000, 1,050 kilograms. And cows could weigh about, cows could weigh about, uh, cows could weigh about seven, 750. So that's the weights they play around. But let me, the sources that I have gave me a weight of about, 1,200 to about 1,300 kilograms, that is the bull, 650 to about 700 to 750 for a cow. So they are heavy, they're huge animals. These are animals that uh, a bull stands about 155 centimeters to 158 centimeters. That's a tall animal, it's a big animal. To about, cows can stand from 139 to about 144 centimeters. That's how, how uh, tall cattle stand. I mean, how tall their cows stand. So these are heavy animals, eh? These are heavy, around the heavy weight. They're around heavy weights. Them, Chianinas and Samantals, they're around about the heavy breed of cattle. But as they are saying, this one can be used in crossbreeding. I saw pictures of a farmer who used a bull that weighed about 1,060 1, kilograms on about a 350 Nguni cow. 
and it, the nguni cow did carry successfully and give birth. So I don't think it has a problem with crossbreeding. As they said, the calves are born with very small heads, but with long bodies, and they grow rapidly and are robust cows. So that's something you can look at when running Rama, Rama, Ramangola cattle, the Italian Ramangola. Winning weight for the Ramangola crosses, when you cross it, can easily reach an average weight of about 285 kilograms at seven months, increasing the average, increasing the average weight by 200, I mean, sorry, by 25 kilograms, not by 225 kilograms per winner. So they can win, the, if you cross them, they can win around, right around about two, 280. So, so sorry, if you're into uh, beef breeds, winning production, beef production, the Ramangola is the way to go. Is it farmed here in Namibia? Yes, it is, it is, it is actually. It's farmed here in Namibia. The farmer who is, the farmers who are respected to actually bring them in, who are the first people to bring them in Namibia is Mr. Visser and Mrs. Stock. They farm on a family farm, Farm Ongama, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Farm Ongama. And that is about 60 k's east of Vinduk. So they, they are Ramangola cattle, uh, cattle farmers. I think a lot of, they are registered. I believe many of them are probably, many of them are probably buying them for crossbreeding production. So that's my two cents on the Ramangola breed, the Italian breed of cattle, another draft animal, which is a heavy breed you could use in crossbreeding. And I believe that's what makes them very good. So... That is my opinion. I mean, those are my two cents on the Ramangola. Those are my two cents on the Ramangola and the history on them. I felt I should do them since I spoke about the Shianina earlier. Without, waste, without wasting any further time, let me ask you guys to do me two favors. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the content that I put out on this video. Hit the subscription button, subscribe to the page, and share the video. Let's try and get that uh, subscription base a bit up there. We're still teetering around the 500 mark. We, we are... Should I say we are, we are limping to 500, we are limping to it, we're not running, we're limping, but I believe sooner or later we'll hit that 500 mark. And remember, the biggest, the biggest, biggest number that I want is to hit that 1,000 mark. If we hit that 1,000 mark, but with that said, guys, have yourself a good evening. When, with that said, guys, have yourself a good evening. Bye for now.